In this video, we are going to do a simulation study to explore the sampling distribution of the mean. To do this, we are going to generate values from a uniform distribution on the interval 120 to 152. So we are going to generate about 10,000 samples, each of size 50. Now before we do that, let's look at the theory first. So we know that if we have a uniform variable, then the mean of this uniform variable is just the expected value of x. And for a uniform distribution, we have that as the minimum value plus the maximum value over 2. So that is basically just the midpoint of this uniform distribution. And we can also go and uh, calculate the variance for the uniform distribution. And we are, this is the variance of x. That is going to be our maximum value minus our minimum value. Square that difference and then divide by 12. But here we are interested not in x as such. We are interested in the distribution of the sample mean of x bar. So we know that the sample means mean will just be the same as the mean for the original values but the variance of the sample mean we need to go and calculate based on the variance of our x values so that means that our variance for x bar is going to just be sigma squared over n i'm going to add a subscript x here just to make us aware that we're using the variance of x to calculate the variance of x bar and we also obviously need our sample size here so let's go generate our sample values so we, to do that we're going to go here to data data analysis and just open our random number generator now in this case we are going to place our samples in the rows and uh, we will have 10,000 samples so we're going to type here that we want uh, samples of size 50 and the reason we're placing the samples in the rows instead of the columns like we did last time is so that when we calculate the sample average we can just copy our formula down using the autofill tool we don't have to drag it across 10,000 different columns so I'm going to type here 10,000 just for the number of rows and then we will choose the uniform distribution to generate our values from so we have to work from 120 up to 152 and I'm going to use a seed value of 1, 2, 3. So then my output range I'm going to place my first value here in A2 and when I do that it obviously takes a moment because it's quite a lot of values to generate so you'll notice that I've hidden my columns uh, most of my columns here I'm only showing you a few values from each sample you can see now that it's done that we end up with 10,000 rows now we can calculate the sample mean for each of these samples so that's just going to be as always using the average function and my, since my sample starts in A2, I'm going to start there and go up to AX2 as well. So that gives me the sample average. And I can repeat this calculation now for all 10,000 rows. And like I said, if we had to, uh, if we place the samples each in a column, we would have had to drag this formula across 10,000 columns, and that would have been quite a job. Now let's work out what our population parameters are. So we said already that our formula for the sample or for the, the population mean for a uniform variable will be the minimum value plus the maximum value and we're going to divide that by 2 to get the midpoint. The variance is just going to be the maximum value that we can observe minus the minimum value we're going to square that and divide by 12. to get the variance of x bar it's just going to be the variance of x divided by my sample size now in the simulation study we want to go and compare what we know 
happens in the population, so these theoretical uh, values we've just calculated, we want to compare them to our sample statistics. So I have a whole column of X bar values here. It's not everything we can observe. We didn't generate every single possible sample. So this is just a sample of sample means. So I'm going to start by calculating the average of these and we want to go and compare it to the average of the original X values theoretically. So I'm just going to calculate the average of this column of values. And you can see it is quite close to my sample mean, or my, sorry, my population mean. Now the variance of X bar is just going to be the variance of these columns, uh, of, of this column of values. So I'm going to take the variance of a sample, since this is just a sample of sample means, and we can see that it is, again, not too far away from what we know is happening in the population. We can also calculate theoretical probabilities if we know the distribution of X bar. And we are going to also calculate empirical probabilities. So in other words, we're going to use this column of X bar values um, in AY to uh, compare to the theoretical probabilities. So to do that, we first need to know the distribution of X bar. Since X, uh, our X values are generated in samples of size 50, so we're using samples of size 50 to calculate each of these X bar values, we can use a normal distribution. So we know X bar has an approximate normal distribution with the same mean as the X values, and we've also calculated the variance of X bar here. So we're going to start by using norm.dist because that is how we calculate normal probabilities in Excel. Our value that we're interested in here is 137.2. We know we have a mean of 136 and our standard deviation of um, X bar is going to be the square root of this value over here. And then we would choose true since we are dealing with a cumulative probability. So we can obtain our theoretical probability like it, uh, of 0.820863688. Now percentiles very similar. We know if we want to calculate a percentile for the normal distribution, we use the norm.inverse function. And the percentile we're interested in is the 75th percentile. So we enter that probability. Again, our mean is just this 136. And our standard deviation is going to be the square root of this variance. And there we end up with our 75th percentile. So we want to now go check this using this column of X bar values. So we just want to uh, see what we've observed. So remember that empirical just means observed. So to do that, we need to go and count how many of these values we observed are less than 137.2 and then convert that into a probability. So I'm going to start with my count if function. And the range I want to go and count in is column AY. And the criteria I'm going to use is going to be less than 137.2. And then I need to divide by how many X value or X bar values I have. Now, generally, we know in this case we generated 10,000 samples, so we have 10,000 sample means. But Let's say we change our mind later and we want to add a few more. We don't want to always just go and change our formula. So I'm just going to go and count here in this column how many values I've observed. And that gives me a probability of 0 0.8149, which is not that far away from the theoretical probability we've calculated. In the same way, can, we can do our empirical percentile. So that's going to be percentile dot exc again we need to just highlight where we are going to get our x bar value so where we want to calculate our percentile and then the value of k will be which percentile it is so again the 0 0.75 and 
again, these two values are not too far apart.